Now I've got a small little project to paint for Turbo Steve. And I'll explain. Uh, he's got the parts. They're going to need a little prep. The wind is howling. This is going to be a challenging paint day. You know how I, how I know this is going to be a fun paint day. The, uh, the cover this morning was in Jason's yard. It, the wind was howling so much. It actually looks like it's calming down now, but we've had some, some very eclectic weather. Now, Steve dropped the parts off a couple of days ago, but we've had so much bad weather, it was just impossible to, to paint. And I wanted to share a couple little ideas. i got his receipt here with his credit card number. I think I'll go make a few house payments on his card. This was the point I wanted to make. We do have some paint left over from his original can, but it's not enough to do a quality job. So he had taken and kept track of this information that's on the can, which when you go to Gavin's, you just give him that number and you're done. Now, because this is a bike Turbo Steve probably will have for a long time, and I'll put the date on it. This is uh, 18. Just because we do have other cans of paint that look similar, but they might not be exactly the same. But this is key information. So what I always say, if if this is my can of paint, I would either take your cell phone camera, take a picture of that. I'll put Steve on here, and just in case that top gets some paint on it. But to have that information at your disposal, just right now, we got two parts to paint. Now what Steve did is he ordered these. In chrome, and I thought, well, there's no point having them in chrome. And when I looked at these, I thought they were anodized. They're not. They have some kind of black, flat, the, the dreaded flat black. So I'm going to lightly sand these with 1,000 grit, get them prepped up, and prime them. And just to, just to confirm what I said, this is the original Turbo Steve paint, 2015. And see, this is what's what happens sometimes, and it's my fault. The paint will drip out, and you lose that information. But luckily, he had it in his telephone, and that's a big thing. Because the bikes we work on, they do get scratched, they're damaged, they need to be repainted. You buff through the paint, whatever. Getting that next can of paint, so important. So, what I'll, what I'll do just to make sure everything is... Uh, as kosher as can be, a little bit of paint that's left in a gun I'll put back in this can and we'll work only with the brand new paint today. Now you can pretty much tell these parts have a, uh, a flat black finish. The reason I know they're not anodized, as I look inside, I can see that, that where the raw aluminum is and where they oversprayed them. Of course they do this on a production line so they have a little jig. Now usually parts like this once they're sanded, then I got to come up with some way of holding them so I can paint them. It, and you th a lot of times you think, oh, that's not going to be a big deal. Well, sometimes you spend more time trying to figure some way to hold the part. Now, usually when we do this, Turbo Steve is here. He's with Mark at a uh, some kind of trade show or something they went to. And so I figured I'd get a little jump on this while we have a day where there's no rain. But 1,000 grit paper next. And I have tried in the past to do this with rougher than 1,000 grit paper. And what happens is you add a lot of unnecessary work to it because then the primer doesn't come out exactly perfect and you have to sand the primer and color sand it. What I found, and I think it's a significant enough thing to share, is if you're going, if you're going to be committed to going over old paint and it doesn't look like they primed this, what it looks like, it looks like this is barbecue paint to be honest. It has the look of what Luciano calls barbecue paint. A little soapy water. I know there isn't going to be a lot of paint on here. They're certainly not looking to... Uh, and it comes right off. So just to scuff it up, once the both parts are totally scuffed with 1,000 grit, it'll be ready for some primer. And I think this would be a perfect part to use the Dupla color, which is a very thin primer goes on very thin. That'll minimize some of the multiple sandings we have to do later on. But you wouldn't want to do is just take this part and just go paint it. You'd be running, the risk you would run is that you're not going to get any adhesion and that's the reason you wouldn't want to strip the primer. The only purpose the primer has in this type of a job is to make the paint latch on. 
So if you have this, if they have this part scuffed up good, you stack the deck in your favor. But and as with all paintwork, there's never a guarantee. There's no guarantee at all that it's a forever. You just try to stack the deck, sand away, get everything. In this case, the whole part is dull and flat anyway, but I want to get it scuffed up as much as I can. And since Steve, like, like myself, he takes a lot of joy and pride in his motorcycles. And one of the guys I, I really enjoy working because he's got the same passion I have for these older motorcycles. But anyway, once that's cleaned up, you really can't even tell it's been sanded because it's, it's flat black. Now after wet sanding these, I got one final little step. I got my little steam cleaner here. And what happened after I wet sanded this, I could see that there were some fingerprints still on it. I don't want to sand through down into the raw aluminum. But what will happen, that steam will help get rid of the little spots. And but believe me, there is not a lot of, there's not a lot of flat black on here. I'm glad this, the guy that painted this was not painting a barbecue. And of course, we'll let that, that steam will get rid of any fingerprints. And actually, it's, it's one extra little step I've been doing to a lot of the parts, especially when they already have paint on them. And you know there's fingerprints and oil and grease and who the hell knows what else is on there. Now, this is prep wall. And you may think um, I'm kind of overdoing the prep on this. But I'm really not. Make a, two reasons, because I don't know the quality of the paint underneath this, and I don't know. See, a lot of times the, this is like that that barbecue paint that really doesn't stick, and my paint's going to come off of this like a salami sandwich, like taking one sheet off of the salami. So I'm trying to be, do a super prep job. Now, the other choice I would have is to sand all of this off, and that would be probably another hour of work. I don't think that's necessary. Now once this dries, that's got to air dry. While it's drying, I'll mix up the paint and get the gun ready. Real good information. If we were down to raw metal, down to the, the raw aluminum, I would want to use some self-etching primer. When I'm going over painted surfaces, I want a sealer, sealer primer. And this has proven to be, actually it was Turbo Steve that brought the first can of this over for us to test. And this worked out real well. This goes on very, very watery thin, and it gets a good bite. And the only purpose of having this is to bond the paint underneath it to the paint that we're going to put on. Now, luckily, I had some nice long bolts and some vice grips that uh, <laughs> they have been used for this purpose before. And so we can get out there and... The wind is still howling. I was hoping this wind would die down, but it's not happening. All we need that for is a binder coat. This will be a 20 minute dry time. Uh, the nice thing here is in this this temperature, the heat is on almost all day in this drafty old house, so stuff will dry up. About 20 minutes though. If you try to rush this, and when it's under the heating vent, that of course speeds it up a lot. But if you if you rush this, that does not stack the deck in your favor. So while that's drying, I want to mix the paint, load up the gun, do a little test. Make sure we're ready to, uh, when that primer is dry, get a coat of red on. It, the wind is so variable out there, it's just unbelievable. So while I'm waiting for paint to dry, Karen brings down the HG, what's the name of this magazine? HGTV. HGTV, she likes to look at this for different things. Oh, look at this guy's got my idea. This is a sprocket, this looks like a rear sprocket. I don't know what this is. This Maybe this is a sprocket for something else. Look at this, now look, in my shop, look. Look, he copied my ideas. I have disc brakes, I actually have disc brakes in the bathroom too. We got a lot of worn out discs. That's a cool thing to do with old sprockets. And how come my picture's not in the I, magazine? I think we should use the idea somewhere. Yeah, in our living room. No, not the living room. <laughs> so you might have thought I was kidding, but I really do have disc brakes in the bathroom, right? 
It's unbelievable. But hey, you never know what a style leader I might be. What things you do while primer is drying. Unbelievable. try to do that is the world's quietest compressor <laughs> what we're going to try to do three coats about 20 minutes apart let it dry for about 20 minutes half an hour and put some clear on it even and the wind is just terrible out here now we got the third coat of red on here what I'm going to do is put it right up by the heating vent yeah it's going to look nice that's got to cook for about 20 minutes or so while we're doing that, we'll clean the gun and mix up the clear. Now for these, they can go right up by the heating vent now. They got their full coats of red on. That's really looking nice. Really nice. And I guess it's been the last two or three years. This is the clear we've been using. And we've had some really nice paint work with this clear. Buffs out real easy, dries quickly, doesn't pick up too much dust. Even if you don't buff it out, it still has a nice shine. see we're spraying under some pretty gusty conditions but it'll be fine these coats have to dry out in the garage now they should dry up out here no problem at all and tomorrow if Steve wants to come over and look at them or pick them up or uh, we could we have the choice of maybe tomorrow or the next day wet sanding it with 2000 putting another coat of clear on and or buffing it i don't know what he wants to do but we have that that is about as good as it gets steve i think you're going to be happy but if you're not you can always get your money back anyway hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching